Hello everyone, welcome to Blue Dragon Actual. Now this is a very special video because this video is recorded by my friend uh, Paru. And this video is on best estimate versus prudent reserve. And she has gone into the nitty gritties of why best estimate is kind of kept and why prudential reserve is kept. And she is also going to do an Excel example for us. Right, so uh, please appreciate her for the hard work and uh, also a special thanks from my side to Parul for making this video, for taking the time out. Uh, that is also one of the reasons that my channel goes by the name Blue Dragon and not Arpan Senukta because I believe that many of my friends can make video. And also if you are interested in making video uh, for a specialized topic that you are kind of specialized in, uh, please reach out to me and we'll publish that video after uh, going through that video, right? So special thanks to Parul. Uh, I mean, obviously uh, there is no need for me to thank Parul, but because Parul is like just my family to me, uh, but obviously I'm just for formality sake, thanks Parul. And please enjoy the video. Uh, however, I have two questions for you. Uh, so Parul mentioned about the prudential reserve. Is there a situation where prudential reserve is beneficial for the company and think from investment income perspective? Also, the second question is, uh, she has mentioned that uh, best estimate is used for pricing and potential reserve is also valuation. But we have heard about IFRS 17 and other, you know, uh, you know, interest regime or uh, uh, other reserve regime which has moved into best estimate reserving, right? So is that correct? Is that statement correct? I mean, of course, that statement is correct. But uh, how is that correct, right? So these are the two things that you can comment upon uh, on this uh, after you watch the video. And uh, yeah, well, these are the and she's recording for the first time, so there is some challenge in the noise and the back, audio background. Uh, so we probably would need to use our headphone to listen to this video. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, yeah, please uh, give it all the love and uh, respect that it deserves. Please see the rest of the video. Thanks. Hello everyone, this is Pahul Agarwal, and uh, today I will be discussing about the topic of best estimate result and the prudent result. But before going into it, let me just give a brief, brief background about myself. So I have been in the actuarial industry for around eight and a half years now, out of which uh, for the first one year, I have been working in the pensions domain. And after that, uh, I have been working in the life insurance domain for around uh, seven and a half years now. So let's go back to the discussion. Let me just share my screen. We will be discussing about the best estimate and the potential results. What is the best estimate result? It is a reserve that is calculated using the assumptions that would give us the real estimate or the true estimate of the future experience. And as it gives us the real estimate, we we'll, uh, also term it as a realistic reserve. Mm -hmm. And these assumptions, uh, these are calculated to ensure that uh, on an average, it does not overstate or understate the actual experience that we expect in the future but by saying that it doesn't overstate or understate does not actually mean that our actual experience would turn out uh, to be what we have expected as a best estimate assumption rather the uh, rather the assumption uh, the, uh, the that we have uh, assumed as a best estimate assumption compared to that our actual experience would be more stronger or weaker but the probability of that experience turning out to be more stronger and weaker compared to our best estimate assumption would be equal so there would be an equal probability that uh, say my uh, mortality experience turns out to be more worse there would be more deaths uh, in the future and the same probability uh, would be considered that uh, the deaths in the future would be lower than I have expected and because we assume that there is no overstating or understating that happens because we do not include any implicit or explicit assumptions by implicit uh, I mean that uh, in the best estimate assumption itself we do not include any kind of margin neither on top of those assumptions we include any margins uh, which can uh, consider our future uncertainty so that's the reason it uh, neither understates or overstates the assumptions and would reflect the true estimate that uh, we would assume to happen in the future. Now, because we assume that uh, the future will turn out to be as what we have expected on average, therefore we uh, 
assume that if we hold a reserve basis the best estimate assumption that should be sufficient to cover all the expense or the air payouts all the claims uh, that we expect to happen in the future now coming on to how these uh, best estimate reserves are calculated so all the best estimate assumptions that we use uh, these are majorly driven by the historic data that we have uh, and the market data that's available but the historic data it might not be relevant anymore because uh, taking the same example of mortality uh, if there was uh, an expected mortality rate of say two uh, percent uh, 10 years back and over those 10 years a lot of improvements might have happened in the healthcare sector and that could have uh, increased our uh, survival rate and thus my mortality rate would have changed from 2% to say 1.8% today. So if we directly use that historical data, that might not be relevant in today's world. So therefore, when we use this historic data or the current market data, we ensure that uh, the companies use the probability weighted average for all the assumptions that they use. And even for the market data, the current market data, that is available that might not be relevant for the company uh, because uh, the target market that they are uh, using for which they are calculating the assumptions could be different and there could be a lot of other reasons as well therefore they uh, take that probability weightage accordingly and then they calculate the best estimate or uh, best estimate assumptions for all of those assumptions and uh, these assumptions uh, company can review time to time based on how the experience changes and uh, how they expect it would impact the future as well. So everything is taken into account and uh, time to time and depending upon the uh, way the company philosophy is, they can review these assumptions. And then comes what uh, for what purpose these assumptions, these reserves are used. So. We don't keep the best estimate reserves for reserving purposes. That we'll see in the next section while discussing the prudential reserves. But these reserves are majorly used for uh, pricing purposes. That's because if we use any uh, margins on top of these assumptions while calculating the premium, the premiums could turn out to be uh, unexpectedly high because that would account for the uncertainty in the future, which actually might not even happen. So for uh, we can discuss on this on a separate uh, discussion, we can come up with a different video, but that's a, a basic concept that on top of these assumptions, they, just, they can even use, uh, they even use uh, profit margins, uh, which covers their profit as well. But these best estimate assumptions would be used for pricing purposes, majorly. Now, coming to the prudential result, as we discussed in the best estimate res uh, as, um, uh, best estimate results that uh, those uh, we expect that that would happen in the future but in reality my assumption would uh, actually be different from what we expected the assumptions uh, the market could uh, move in companies favor or uh, in, against them and therefore the actual experience in the future that would be better or that would be worse than what we have expected while uh, calculating those uh, best estimate assumptions and therefore to encounter for that uh, future uncertainty the companies keep in additional margins on top of the best estimate assumptions and these assumptions are known as the uh, prudent margins uh, that we keep so these prudent margins uh, they are added on top of best estimate assumptions and uh, the more the margins that are added to the best estimate assumptions, the strengther or the higher the reserve would be. So that means uh, the company's strength has increased because if uh, my future turns out uh, to be worse, uh, even in those scenarios, the company would have enough reserves, the enough uh, money to pay out for the claims. But again, it doesn't mean that uh, the, that higher the margins are, the stronger the reserves are, the better the company is. Because if the company keeps unexpectedly high amount of reserves uh, than even required for the future, that means they are locking their money and 
not uh, using it to earn some additional returns over that. So that could be against that, uh, against the their company's philosophy and might go against company in terms of uh, saying that they're not utilizing uh, their funds in a proper way. So therefore, for calculating uh, these margins, the companies, again, have their own philosophies uh, which they use. So for example, uh, the investment philosophy or the reinsurance philosophy, the company uh, might have uh, the investments in a certain sector, which could mean that they might have to increase uh, their reserves if they are investing in more risky assets. And if they are uh, investing in uh, less risky assets, then they might keep lower reserves. So all these things matter while calculating these reserves. And for the valuation purposes or for the reserving purposes, we use the prudent reserves as uh, the company would have the option to reserve even in, uh, even under the worst scenarios. So that's all uh, for today and uh, thanks for watching and uh, for the next step uh, we'll be coming up with another Excel example uh, so that uh, it shows how these two uh, reserves interact with each other. So thanks everyone. Please uh, comment for anything that you have in terms of any suggestions, any comments that you have. Thank you.